Welcome back to Visions. I'm Sally Dusting Laird, and our guests tonight are former Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser and Julian Burnside QC from the Justice Project. Welcome back, gentlemen. So, Mr Burnside, why doesn't Europe follow the same harsh policies of Australia? Well, um, first they have the memory of the events of the 1930s and 40s in Germany as a, a warning, but second, they've got the European Human Rights Convention, which would absolutely prevent it from being legal there. And there's an interesting reflection that if Australia was geographically eligible for membership of the European Union, we would be excluded at the threshold because of our treatment of asylum seekers. We fall below the minimum requirements for human rights in Australia judged by European standards. What about Australia and a uh, human rights bill? D does Australia have a human rights bill? We, we, we don't. Um, the ACT has got a Human Rights Act which has been in place for two years and a bit. Victoria has in the last couple of weeks got a Human Rights Act. Um, unfortunately state and territory Human Rights Acts can't have a bearing on Commonwealth legislation and the greatest human rights abuser in this country at the moment is the Commonwealth Government. So state and territory bills are good and they're a very good start but they don't fix the problem that the Commonwealth Government is uh, causing. Uh, one of the programs which the Justice Project is embarked on is uh, a, a, a program of achieving a federal human rights act in the medium to long term. I suspect that it will be a fairly long project. How how much longer do you think? Well, I think in the next five years you'll probably find most states and territories adopting human rights acts in more or less similar terms. And depending on the complexion of the federal government from time to time, I think they may see their way clear to introducing a, a statutory rather than constitutional bill of rights at federal level. The advantage of a statutory bill of rights is that it doesn't frighten the parliamentarian so much. It can be overridden by later Acts of Parliament if they feel they need to. And um, experience in other uh, Western countries has shown that there's greater success in introducing statutory bills of rights initially so that the, you, know, you don't frighten the horses. Uh, and of course you have to remember Australia is the only Western country that does not have a bill of rights. Just uh, briefly, how will it affect the the people of Australia to have a Bill of Rights in place? Most people would not notice any difference at all. Um, the people who might notice the difference are the people who at the moment feel the sting of human rights abuses. One of the problems in most societies is that um, a democratic system means majoritarian rule and that means that the will of the majority will sometimes bear very harshly on unpopular minorities. The unpopular minorities are the ones who are at risk. Um, so unfortunately a lot of people in our society take this view that human rights are very good for me and very good for my family and friends and neighbours but not so important for people we don't like. Not so important for those people over there who dress strangely or whose religion we don't agree with. They're the people whose human rights can be trashed and no one is concerned. Now, the point about human rights is that they belong to us by virtue of being human. They belong to everyone, even people we don't like, even people we disagree with. And that's the level of uh, evolution that Europe has come to, but which we have not yet reached. OK, Mr Fraser, I'd, I'd like to ask you, um, could you tell me how much power the government has um, against... Oh, a person walking down the street. How much power do they well, have over that person? Uh, depending on what's in the government's mind now, a, a very great deal. Uh, most people are not aware that any Australian can be taken away in secret and detained for questioning. Now your immediate reaction, oh well then that person's done something terrible. No, the government may only have to believe that that person observed something which the person is not even conscious of having observed. They don't have to think the person is guilty. They don't have to think the person is planning to commit a crime or any sort of offence. So they can detain somebody they know to be entirely innocent. And then they question that person in secret. Uh, it would be most unusual to be allowed to ring up a lawyer 
You can't bring up your family. You can't let them know where you are. So far as they're concerned, you just disappear for the period of the detention and the questioning. If you don't answer questions to the satisfactory of the authorities, and the authorities in this case would be ASIO, uh, you can be prosecuted. If convicted, you can go to jail for five years. And how can you answer questions satisfactorily when you don't know what they're talking about? Uh, now, it's a defense, and therefore you wouldn't go to jail if you can prove you didn't know whatever it was they thought you'd observed. But how can you prove you don't know something when you don't know whatever that thing is? You're proving a negative, the bonus of proof is reversed. So all the power is in the hands of the government, of the authorities. And people really need to know and to understand that these powers reach to everyone. They're not just going to affect people who we might think are different, who come from or followers of Islam. Because when there are basic human rights abuses of these kinds, when you allow for the secret jailing of innocent people, no other Western country has done that. We're the only one that has legislated for that power. And Why do you think we're so archaic? Um, I, I thought we had won these lessons for all time. And after the Vietnam War and after the refugees coming here then, I thought, you know, well, Australia's learned, Australia's grown up, we're a multicultural society. Now I know that each generation has got to win this battle again and again and for themselves. We're led in the wrong direction. If we'd been led in the right direction, we wouldn't have these problems. So, Mr Burnside, what can the average person do? I think the starting point is to imagine themselves as the person whose human rights are being destroyed. Imagine themselves at the wrong end of a secret detention order, at the wrong end of a secret interrogation order or the like. And then when they understand what breaches of human rights are like, they should start campaigning for a Bill of Human Rights in this country, in each state, in each territory and at Commonwealth level. Well, thank you both for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure to have you. You've been watching Visions. I'm Sally Dusting-Laird, and our guests tonight were former Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser and Julian Burnside QC from the Justice Project. Good night, and take care. <laughs>